JavaScript, the language that all programmers love to hate because of its inexplainable quirks and semicolon filled confusing syntax, but one that you will almost certainly have to learn anyway because JavaScript is the undisputed king of the web and the ruler of the front ends. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can master the JavaScript programming language really, really fast in 2023. Because the thing is, most people make their life way harder than it has to be when it comes to learning programming languages and chances are you are doing this as well because if you've been following the common advice about learning programming you're probably learning in completely the wrong way and if you've ever tried learning a programming language before by watching this video you're finally gonna learn why it is so goddamn difficult to get what you learn to actually stick in your brain and how to fix that before we talk about all of that it's good to understand why exactly is JavaScript such an important language for everyone to learn. If you're trying to learn to code to get a job, it's useful to realize that not all programming languages are created equal. Because firstly, some of them are much harder to learn than others. If you try to learn something like C, it's going to take you a lot longer than learning something like Python or JavaScript. Because languages like JavaScript and Python are something that we know as high level languages, meaning that they hide a lot of underlying detail for you to make it easier for you to write code faster. And the second factor is that some languages are simply in more demand in the industry. There's more companies using them and therefore more jobs available for them. So ideally, we want to choose the language that's easy to learn and that also at the same time has a lot of job demand for it and luckily language like that does exist it's called javascript basically when you want to build a website or a web app you have something called a backend and a front end the back end can be written in a bunch of different languages like python javascript whereas the front end which is basically all the code that gives you what you can see inside of the browser can only be written in one language JavaScript. So if you want to get jobs in web development, which is where most of the jobs are, by the way, you don't have a choice. You have to learn JavaScript at some point. And for that reason, besides Python, it is one of the only two beginner programming languages that I recommend people learn. And I'll get back into the whole debate of Python versus JavaScript and which one to pick in a moment. But first, let's look at the exact steps that you should take right now to master JavaScript and get hired as fast as possible. Our first step is that, well, we need to get started, don't we? Uh, but which course do I need to there's hundreds of possible courses out there, hundreds of tutorials, all of this. All of them will work. But if you want me to tell you exact recommendations, here are my two favorite ones. The first one is absolutely free and it's called the Odin Project. This is what I personally started with back in the day because I was broke and I was finding the free way to start learning web development. At the very least, I recommend you read like the first couple of sections because their explanations of how the web works and all of this is really, really excellent. It's just text-based articles. But if you're looking for a free way, to learn JavaScript, at this stage of your learning, you should go through the foundation sections of the Odin project. It's absolutely excellent. The second one, which is my personal favorite, is Zero to Mastery's Web Developer Online Full Bootcamp. Essentially, what this is, is a full video course from completely zero to becoming a web developer. It is your JavaScript, HTML, CSS, how the web works, everything that you need. And the thing that I always say is that it doesn't matter what resource you pick, just pick something that you resonate with. The best resource is one that you can stick to. And the Zero to Mastery courses for me are excellent for that precise reason. These are some of the courses that I've used the most in my own journey. They're not sponsoring this, but I'm choosing to be affiliated with them for that reason. And I do have a 10% discount code for you down below. Highly recommend you check them out. And the second step is to start being a web developer. That's it. Okay. I think that requires a bit more explanation, right? How can I be a web developer if I want to just learn the basics? I can't even write any code. The thing that most people will tell you is that you need to memorize all of these details. You need to understand async functions are like call stacks and like all these things before you can start writing code. But the problem with this kind of learning is that if you try to learn everything before you apply any of it, you will just end up forgetting almost all of it. And then when it comes to time to actually use it, you're basically still back in square one. So the philosophy that I used to learn, and this is like my really big thing, is that you should try before you think you can do it. And to really drill this in for you, let me explain this to you by talking about riding a bike. You wouldn't try learning to ride a bike by watching someone else ride a bike, by reading about riding a bike. You would learn to ride a bike by actually riding a bike, right? And by first riding it really badly and falling a bunch of times, 
you would eventually get better through trial and error. And this is the uncomfortable process of learning that we all have to go through and uh, all the best programmers go through to actually learn programming skills as well. If you try to give your brain information without context, it's not gonna understand that it's important and it's not gonna like make it stick for you in your brain. This is why when you learn a bunch of stuff, you end up forgetting it straight after because you don't do the work of actually trying to apply it. Basically, the what science says about learning is that the harder your brain has to work, the more effective your learning is. And when your brain is working the absolute hardest is when you're trying to extract the information out of your brain. You should just pick up a bunch of projects that you don't know how to build yet and then start building them and figure out the steps along the way. Okay, so at this stage, what we wanna be doing is putting in as many reps, as I like to call them, as possible. When it comes to just coding a lot of JavaScript, because the thing is, the more you code, the more you learn. And the best tip that I can give you when it comes to like how to actually learn really fast is using a technique called visualization. For me, when I can see the output of my code in front of me, it just makes it so much easier for me to understand. It allows me to learn so much faster. But the issue is with a lot of IDEs, it's sort of difficult to visualize. So that is why what I recommend you do is download this tool called Run.js. What this is, is essentially this minimalist window that you can have open to to instantly visualize your code. And this is like absolutely amazing. And I wish I had this when I was starting out. For example, let's say right here, we're practicing array method. So we got that for each, and then we wanna see like what's actually happening. So we console log it. But instead of having to run the code separately, you can just see the result of your code on the right hand side here. And then when you change things, we can instantly see what's happening right here. You can even test NPM packages without actually having to install them on your computer. And then you can even start building your own code snippet library of these pieces of code that you have written to use in other projects as well. This is something that I think is totally revolutionary and something that absolutely every JavaScript developer should be using. So right now, go and download this and have this open with you whenever you're coding. Play around with it. This is what's gonna start building up that intuition inside of your brain and allow you to start mastering JavaScript really fast. They did sponsor this video, so thank you so much for Run.js for reaching out. This is one of those tools that is becoming a staple in my own workflow and I think all of you should absolutely be using it. So go download it right now and keep using it throughout the rest of these steps, the next of which we're gonna talk about now. So right now you're a web developer, right? Not quite. You thought we were done here? Nah, 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 nah. What most people do is they get this point and they build some like weather app or to-do app or like this basic project. And then they're like, ah, oh, Thomas, I built like five projects using JavaScript. Why am I still not getting interviews? Well, because your projects suck at this point. Okay, the thing is that up until this point, we've been learning basically plain JavaScript with plain HTML and CSS. But the thing is, and I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but in 2023, no one uses plain JavaScript. Everyone uses what we know as framework. What a framework is, is basically like a pre-built thing that is built around plain JavaScript to make web development easier for you. We remember from our explanation before, we've got the back end and we've got the front end. Actually building our server and everything like that manually is pretty complicated. So they built these pre-built frameworks with everything that you need to start using a server right away. The same thing for the front end, actually building out a complex front end for a website is actually quite complicated. So they've built these frameworks to make it easier for you. But Thomas, then why did we just spend so much time learning plain JavaScript and HTML if no one uses them? Well, it's because in order to understand these frameworks, you need to learn the foundations of plain JavaScript first. It's sort of like trying to use a calculator before learning the foundations of how addition or multiplication works works before that. You need to understand the foundations so that then you can essentially ignore them and just start building on top of them. I mentioned before that you can use the backend in many different languages like Python or Java and things like this. But if you've learned JavaScript already, it makes sense for you to also do the backend in JavaScript using this framework called Node.js and Express. There's a great course again by Zero to Mastery that goes over all of this, including like in a very detailed way how the backend actually works, how these frameworks are actually build. If you're more interested in the front end, Zero to Mastery's React Bootcamp is again, absolutely the best choice for me. Their React course is honestly probably one of the best programming courses I've ever done because the way they do it is by essentially building a project as you're going along the course. So basically at the end of the course, you're gonna have a really great front-end portfolio project to just put in your resume. And if you wanna be really serious and you wanna become a full stack developer, then you wanna learn both of these. You learn the back-end and the front-end. Baba Thomas, how do I know which one I should pick? If you don't know which one to pick and you wanna pick one of them, 
pick React. Because the thing is, if you want to get hired, you need to be able to build portfolio projects to show that you know how to code. And it's sort of difficult to build a project just with the back end without the front end. So you're sort of going to have to have a front end anyway. So it makes sense to at least learn the front end. So now, are you finally ready to start applying for jobs? No, because there's still a massively important step that unfortunately 95% of people ignore, which is the reason why 95% of people never get hired. So listen very carefully. And step number four is to be a web developer. Again, this time we're coding something serious. And the mistake that you want to avoid at this step is getting stuck on building stuff that's comfortable for you. Again, remembering how do we learn? We learn about being uncomfortable. So you need to exit out of building your simple to-do apps and weather apps and whatever that we're fine in step two. But now this should be too easy for you. And if you keep building these things that are too easy for you, you won't progress and you won't progress to the next level, the level of being an actual developer. I hate to break it to you, but the competition for programming jobs is really tough. So that means that this time you do actually need to build something impressive. You need to build something that actually shows that you know how to write code using the foundations of the skills that you've learned this far. And quite frankly, just a lot of Googling and using things like ChatGPT to aid you. Again, if that idea scares you, welcome to the tech industry. Like the competition is tough. This is not easy, but you have to put in the work. But to hopefully make this like less scary for you, I want to remind you of the thing that is the most important thing that I want you to take out of this video, which is to try before you think you can do it. If you just do that and you follow these steps, you will be able to master JavaScript and web development in 2023. And it doesn't have to take a long time if you just follow the tried and tested path that actually works. Okay, so then how do we turn all of this into an actual job as a web developer? Well, the way you do that is very simple. You just take this project that you've now built, you place it inside of your resume and then you apply. And because you've built a real functioning piece of software that's actually impressive, you've essentially bypassed the problem of not having experience because now you've actually built something. Therefore, you have experience. Therefore, you're a software developer. Therefore, you will be able to impress recruiters. And this is the way that self-taught developers get hired without experience or without like relevant education. But should you really pick JavaScript anyway? You know, I sell a course on Python. So who do I recommend JavaScript to? And who do I recommend Python to? Like, how do I know which one to pick? And I actually made a full video on exactly how you can pick between Python and JavaScript, who Python is for, who JavaScript for, what are the best resources for each of these? Like in which scenario should you learn one over the other? You should absolutely go and watch this video next before you do anything because picking the wrong path for you could lead to you wasting a lot of time. And I don't want you to do that. So absolutely go watch this video next and I'll see you there in a second.